Good morning, everybody. Silas back again on this windy, windy day. That's pretty much given at this point in time. It's always windy here now. I guess this is the new normal. <laughs> but I got something a little bit different today. As I mentioned in some previous videos, if you watch my videos, you already know this, but if you don't watch my videos, I'm getting ready to go on a three-day camping trip, and I needed something to sleep in. Several years ago, I took a truck bed trailer with a topper on it, and that's what I used for a number of years to go camping in. Last year, I took the back half of a 1957 to 60 Ford panel truck that somebody had cut and made, and it's really, really cool, and I'd like to finish it someday, but it leaks water a little bit, and it's supposed to rain this year, and it rained a little bit last year, and so I got a little bit wet and cold in that thing. So I don't want to take that again this year. Uh, the year before that, I took my little Jeep that I drive sometimes, but the problem with that one is, is I'm not really that tall. I'm like five foot nine, but I can't quite fit laying down even at an angle in the back of that Jeep. It's still kind of uncomfortable, and so I really don't want to take that. And so I want to be able to take my trailer that I took the year before that, which is this one. This here was originally a truck about like the one that I drive, only it had been in a wreck and had been t-boned in the cab, so the cab was junk, but the trailer, the bed, and the topper and all that was all good, so I thought this would make a perfect trailer. So I went and cut the frame. I made it a little bit long, that way I'd have room to put stuff up here, because I used to take this to antique shows. I load it with all my antiques, but then I decided to start taking it camping, and it works absolutely perfect for that. I just used the stock wheels, the stock wiring, I just kind of wired a trailer plug on it, and got it going good and it, it works fantastic. It doesn't leak anywhere. It's got the high topper on it so I can actually sit up on my cot when I put it in there. It's a six foot bed so I can fit my cot in there and I can lay down comfortably and still have room to put my bags and my clothes and that sort of stuff. It is an absolutely fantastic camping wagon. The only issue is, is that after I went camping, let's see here, it would have been in 2019, about two months later, there was an auction with a bunch of antiques so I went to that auction and I bought a ton of stuff. Uh-oh. My shocks gave out on me. I don't have time to replace those. That's not good. Oh, well, we'll figure something out for that later. Get me a pair of ice grips so I can clamp on there and keep it up in the air. But anyway, I bought a ton of stuff. Now, I've cleaned out a bunch of this. This was full, clear to the back. And I actually bought this and packed it full, and my truck was clear full of stuff as well. I bought a bunch of old Maytag engines and old pedal cars and some other stuff that I put in the truck. I sold all that a long time ago, and this was stacked up about this high, even with these windows, all the way to the back. And I sold a bunch of that stuff on eBay. But the thing is, is right about the time that I started cleaning this out was about the time I started fading out my eBay account. And I quit doing eBay nearly as much as I used to. So I just never made it through the rest of this. So I don't even remember what all's in here. It's been three years now. There we go. I got a prop for the window now. So it'll stay up so I can actually get in here. But there's some pretty cool stuff in here. Like I said, I don't remember everything that's in here. And I sold a bunch of stuff. But I know there's a bunch more in here. This is pretty cool. House deal is made. And it's got... All sorts of different things in here. Got the pig iron, the iron ore. So we can get this open all the way. There we go. Got some coke, steel rod, limestone, and here's a film strip that it would actually play, and it would play and show exactly how steel is made. It's pretty, pretty, pretty interesting. I don't know that it's really worth any money, but it is definitely really cool. It's definitely pretty old. There's that, and then there's this two hickey here. Now I know what this is. Well, let's see if you can guess what this is. I actually found a patent number on it when I first bought it. At first, I didn't know exactly what it was, and I had a good idea, but I just never seen anything like it. So I found a patent number on it, and I was able to figure out exactly what it is and what year it was patented. Pa patented? How do you say that word? <laughs> Normally, I can talk pretty good, but I'm struggling with that word. Got that, and then here's another piece. See if you can guess what this piece is. See if you can guess what this is. This is a really unique piece. It took me a long time to figure out what this one was. You uh, you turn this, and this here kind of jiggles back and forth. Like this as you turn it. If you know what that is, major, major points to you because nobody knew what that was, and until I found the patent number on it, we couldn't figure it out. It's a very old piece that's over 100 years old, I'll tell you that. We got some old, looks like vintage EQs, PVs. These, believe it or not, are worth quite a bit of money to people that collect vintage audio equipment. I've got bunches of just craft things. People people buy, used to buy this stuff on eBay all the time. Vintage buttons, things like that. I used to sell tons of that sort of stuff. Oh, here's a neat vintage holster. 
toy holster with two of the bullets. It's a Ranger. It's an interesting piece. A lot of this stuff I'm probably just going to take back to another auction and just resell. I don't have time to do eBay like I used to. Oh, there was a ton of wooden blocks. I remember now I sold a ton of wooden blocks out of here. This is a big one here. There's several of these great big ones in here. These are probably homemade, honestly. But there was a bunch of actually made made ones. And those were pretty cool. Those sold pretty quick. Bunches of old tools. I really don't remember why I put this blind in here. Oh, old typewriters. These here. Those little silver rings right around those keys. All the little buttons on these sell or used to sell anyway. I don't know if they still do. But people would make charms out of them and things like that. So those used to sell really good. And that's why I bought all those is so I could pull all the keys off of them and sell those and then just scrap the rest of them. But there's a bunch of interesting stuff in here. So what I'm going to do is I've got to get all this cleaned out so I can take this camping in three days. I got three days. So I have to get this cleaned out today. If I have enough time, if not, I'll have to come back out tomorrow after church and finish cleaning it out. So I'm going to set the camera up. And if I find anything interesting, I'll kind of show it to you. I don't really have anywhere good to put all this stuff. It's kind of a bad deal. I really, really need to find some place to store stuff. I need a big box or something like that, but all my boxes over there are all full. So I need another one really, or I got those buses over there, but I want something where the sunlight isn't on the stuff. Like this box here probably wasn't that faded when I got it. You can see the original color of it. And if I wouldn't have this out in the sunlight, it wouldn't be all faded like that. Probably would have made it a lot more valuable. So I want to keep the stuff out of the sunlight. So what I'm going to do, I've got this rickety old building. It's not the greatest, but it's better than nothing right now. So I'm going to come in here, kind of clean this stuff out a little bit clean this table off a little bit and i'm just going to put everything on this table if there's anything that can't be around moisture all like that box that cardboard box things like that i'll go ahead and take and put those somewhere else but the majority of that stuff will be perfectly fine just to lay in here it's just old rusty tools anyway before i get into all that though i just want to show you guys this right here i went and picked up i don't know how many thousand license plates there are here but these came from the dv now they all have to be destroyed absolutely have to be destroyed i just didn't have time right that minute when i got them to do that so I've got to go through and shred all of these. But I thought there might be some really cool ones in there you guys might like to see. So if you'd like to see a video of me going through these license plates, give this video a thumbs up, let me know in the comments. And then probably next month or so before I destroy these, I can make a video of going through them, show you what all we got. But please don't ask if any of them are for sale or if I can slip one or two out because I absolutely cannot. We get a lot of license plates from them and it's a good deal and I don't want to ruin that deal by doing something like that. Even just one license plate might ruin the whole deal. So I really don't want to do that. There's some really cool stuff in here though. Like check these out. These are all brand new, never issued. Benedictine College. I think there's some Friends University. Yeah, some Friends University. Pretty cool stuff. What happened to us is Kansas went to flat plates and those were the leftover embossed plates that they had in stock. And so obviously they can't issue those anymore. So they got scrapped. It's kind of a shame to cut those up. Those are probably worth a lot of money, but like I said, I don't want to ruin a good deal. Man, there is some cool stuff in here. I don't even know what half the stuff is like this here. I have absolutely no clue what that is. Looks like some wood, steel, and brass combination of some sort. If you know what that is, let me know. I thought it was a wagon wheel at first, but it's not, so I have no clue. Toy helicopter. That's pretty cool. Got some of these old clamp-on style mirrors that are popular for old hot rods. Bunch of old tools. Those signs there came from another farm cleanup I did. Those were already in here. But that bucket over there is clear full of old traps or some old pulleys. Bunches of neat stuff here. Yeah, this whole box here is mostly just toys. But if you look in here, I've got old gauges. Check out that gauge there. What's that say? HiMac compression gauge. That's pretty cool. That's just scrap iron there. This here is really cool. I forgot I even bought that. Hutchinson Foundry, Hutchinson, Kansas. There used to be a foundry right here in town that actually made steel. So that's pretty cool there. That'll go in my personal collection. I knew I had that, and I was actually looking for that here a few months back, and I couldn't remember where I put it. And I was worried that maybe it had disappeared or gotten lost, but now I found it. Got old hubcaps, old lights, an old bee smoker, old hide scraper. These really cool ornate pieces for doorknobs. There's a whole box of doorknobs up in there still, I think. This old thing here, whatever that is, another trap. 
bunches of cool stuff so far and I'm not even halfway done yet. We got some more goodies, bunches and bunches of tools. Excuse the noise this door is making. One of these days I need to just come out here and chop these doors off. They're so annoying. They don't latch, they don't close right, they just rattle in the wind. But anyway, some neat stuff in here. The reason why I bought all these tools is because a lot of people will make arts and crafts out of old tools. They'll weld together sculptures and, and blacksmiths like some of these old tools for making knives and things like that. So that's why I bought most of these. Yeah, it's just mainly tools, tools, more tools, more tools. Looks like a few car parts in there. But this here is pretty cool. All these old, old, old doorknobs and hardware. Check out those there. I've never seen ones like that. Those are really, really cool. But bunches of neat stuff in here. All that stuff will sell good. One thing as I was cleaning this out that I remembered I bought that I've already sold is I bought a whole box clear full of brass cow tags. And everybody thought I was crazy because I paid like 120 or 170 bucks or it was some crazy high number for them. And I turned around and I sold those for like four or $500 for that box. So I made pretty good money on it. But I remember at the auction, everybody was telling me how crazy I was. But check this out. That is too cool. It's missing a lot of the parts. But that is a very cool piece there. That and there I won't sell. Bunches of old thread spools those always used to sell really good I don't know if they still do but there's two tubs of those and then if you think you know what's inside of this box right here let me know in the comments it's pretty cool I opened it up a minute ago to see what was in it and I'm not gonna tell you what's in it yet but if you think you know what's in there let me know in the comments all right here's the big reveal there's your last and final clue check that out that is so cool you talk into it and it types what you're saying. Pretty cool. I think this is the one and only of these that I've ever had. If I remember right, this went pretty cheap at the auction. A lot of that stuff went fairly cheap. I paid too much for the typewriters, I remember that. But everything else I got a pretty good deal on. Like most of these boxes of tools, I think it gave an average of like $2 per box. Or some of those went for three or four, but pretty cheap. But I think I gave like four bucks for this. Pretty neat piece. I'm probably just gonna take it to the auction. I wouldn't even wanna know what this would cost to ship. I'm gonna hop up in here again. This brings back a lot of memories. The climbing in here, I would pack this in clear full like this every time I went to an antique show. I'd pack it full the Friday before, and then Saturday morning I'd have to leave my house at about 4 or 5 o'clock in the morning to get there in time, that way I'd have time to get set up. And I'd unload it all, and whatever didn't sell, I'd have to load it all back up. Some of the shows I did really good, and some of them I didn't hardly sell anything. Check out that homemade tomahawk right there. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Some ingenuity went into that one. Pretty neat. One thing that's kind of interesting though is they use rivets instead of screws or bolts so you can't change out the blade. Yeah, a bunch of old tools. Here's a whole bunch of license plates. I forgot about those there. Some pretty cool ones in there shaped like Kansas. Yeah, 51 to 55 were shaped like Kansas. What else we got in here? Well, there's an old South Dakota. That's pretty cool. It's got Mount Rushmore on there. I don't know what else is in here. It's an old California, 67. Oh, that's pretty cool. Like I said, a lot of this I'm going to run to the antique auction. Next one he has and just dump it. But some of it I will sell myself because I know it'll bring a lot more money if I sell it and sell it the correct way. But a lot of this stuff, probably at least three-fourths of this stuff, I'm just going to run to the auction. I don't have time to mess with it anymore. It's a different part of my life. It's long gone now. But yeah, I know a lot of you may see something in here that you're interested in. And just right now, I don't have time to sell them. So it's going to be a little while before I have time to do that. But... If you want to email me sometime next month, then maybe I'll have time to sell some stuff. But right now, price of scrap's still up. I'm trying to get out of town. i got a lot going on. So if you email me right now and ask if you can buy something, I'm probably going to tell you not right now. A whole bunch more license plates. I like these old frames. Those are pretty cool. Vintage frames. That's a 57 tag there. I think these are mostly 50s tags here. Maybe a few 60s. 40s. 40s. 1935 there. Oh, 1925. That's getting pretty old now. Yeah, I want to keep going through here, see what else I can find. There's bunches of old wrenches. These here are pretty neat. Those are a pretty cool piece. Man, this brings back a lot of memories. That kind of, that's starting to come back to me now, that whole auction. There's a lot of cool stuff there. 
And the thing is, is I spent, I think, around $1,500 to $2,000 at that auction, and I already sold enough stuff to almost double my money. So all this stuff's more than paid for, so I'm not too worried about selling it right away. But later this summer, I'll go ahead and auction off most of it. This is a cool piece right here. Check that out. That's pretty neat. I don't know if there's a brand on that or not. I don't see one, so probably just no name, but still a pretty neat piece. That'd look really cool hanging on somebody's wall. And that's the main type of tools I wanted to buy with stuff like that. But a lot of times what they would do at that sale, because it was so big and there was so much stuff, they would take a box like that and a box like that and a box like that or that. They'd put two or three or four together and they'd do one bid for all. So if I wanted to buy the cool box, I had to buy all of them, but I'd pay like five, six dollars for all of them. The bad part about that is, is then I wound up with a whole bunch of just garbage boxes like that. But the good part is, is I wound up with a bunch of really cool boxes like this and like that. And like that there, there's a lot of cool tools in there. Like check out this really curved wrench. That's a neat piece. What else we got? We got an old Ford wrench. We got an old Ford wrench, that's pretty cool. I'm sure my dad will want a bunch of these. He likes old rusty tools. So I'll have to go through and let him pick out which ones he wants to keep first. And then I'll probably sell the rest of them. There's an old ratchet, check that thing out. There's a whole bunch of big wrenches in here. Big old wrenches. I don't know what all we're gonna find in here. We're not done yet, there's still more to go. Just about done. Got quite a few lined up up here to take out. This corner's empty. I got a few left in that corner. But this floor is hard on my knees. I don't remember hurting this bad. Of course, I was in my 20s the last time I was in here. Now I'm in my 30s, so maybe it's true what they say, that when you hit 30, stuff starts going downhill. <laughs> yeah, it's hurting my knees pretty good, so I'm going to take a breather real quick. But check this thing out. There's the uh, hot ones I already took in there. I didn't realize there was a pair of them. But believe it or not, these here will sell for pretty good money, even in this condition. Just because people restoring very old houses love to have original hardware. And they'll have this professionally restored. And it's crazy to me, but people do it. Well, I'm taking a break. For those of you that couldn't quite figure out what those two pieces over there were, the one on top is a popcorn popper. And I believe the patent date on it was like 1908 or something like that. And the piece underneath it there is an old cream separator machine cleaner. That's the thing they would put down inside there and it would go back and forth and the little cones that are inside a cream separator for those of you that know how a cream separator works there's a little attachment on the end of that that would actually go down inside those uh, cream separator cone things and it would swish back and forth and it would clean them it took forever to figure out what that was I honestly don't know if there's anybody left alive that actually used one of those I'm sure there is somewhere but that is a very old 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 piece I think the patent date on it was like 1892 or something like that it's crazy check these out these are pretty cool the arts and decor people that make crafts will absolutely love these here. This box will sell for pretty good money. Or back in the day, it was sold for really good money. But even still, these are unusual enough that somebody will pay, pay pretty good for these. Yeah, back in the day, this is probably a $50, $60 box. But now it's probably about a $30 or $40 box. And we got a hidden treasure in the very last box. Old pocket watch. Don't think it's anything special. Looks like it's just silver plated. Can't tell what brand it even is. It's pretty rusty, but... Once again, the arts and crafts people will like it. Not a lot of value there, but still, it's just a unique find. There we go. That's pretty well everything now. I got all these boxes here, clear full of wrenches, all these typewriters. I think there's seven of those. A few toys there. Bunches of more boxes of just random tools and other things. I had to put a few down there on the ground, and I even had to put a few over there on that shelf. I need to come in here and clean this room out. There's a bunch of just junk in here and scrap, but I just, one of those things, I'll put it on the list of things I don't have time to do. Check this piece out here. I found this in one of those boxes. It's an aluminum ring, with a stainless piece on it. Once again, if you think you know what that is, let me know in the comments, because this one, I actually don't know what it is. I think I have an idea, but let's see what you think. Go ahead and put that in the comments now. What I think that is, is a wiener for calves. You put that on the calves' nose somehow, whether through the nose or somehow, somewhere or another. Maybe it's not even for a cow. Maybe it's for a pig or something like that but anyway when it's on there it's like this and when they go up to the mama's udders to drink it stabs the mama and the mama's like huh uh, get away boy that's my guess anyway if you think you know better what it is let me know i've got a few pieces left in here but i am out of time i have other obligations to do today so i'm gonna have to just go ahead and close this back up all this is stuff i want to put i have a little bit of room in that one box over there and so i want to put all this stuff in there so it doesn't have access to moisture so it doesn't get ruined i want to just try to sell those locally on marketplace or something like that and then this stuff here, I'll figure out what I'm going to do with it all later. The pieces that I'm getting rid of anyway. So I'm going to close all this up and I'm going to head out and I will see you guys tomorrow. And welcome back. We are back out here again today. It's nice out here today. There's no wind hardly at all. It's a really beautiful day. But I've got to dig this truck out. I'm headed up here now to get the loader. 
got to dig the truck out and I've got to dig out a, an old rusty truck bed. I got to cut the nose off the truck and I got to cut the tailgate off of the truck bed. I hope I have enough time to get it done. I'm kind of already kind of pushing it on time. If I don't get it done, I'm going to have to come out here at 4 in the morning and finish it, 5 in the morning and finish it because that guy's going to be here like 8 o'clock in the morning. So I've got to hustle and I've got to dig that truck out and I don't think it'll take that long. It's about 3 o'clock now and I have till about 5 o'clock to get it done. So two hours should be plenty of time to get it all done. And there we go. I got it set out. I only had to move a few trucks to get it out so that didn't take too long. Uh, I don't remember exactly where he wants me to cut it. So I'm probably going to cut it somewhere right here in front of the emblem. And just leave it long, that way he can cut it down more if he wants to. Normally I would cut it probably right about here. But I'll probably cut it back more about here. So he can trim off some if he wants. Then I got to cut the tailgate off this old bed over here. It's just junk, rusted to nothing. But it does have a cool Chevy tailgate on it. So he wanted that for a wall hanger. But anyway, I'm going to find my glasses. I'm going to fire up the torch and get to cutting. There we go, got them both cut off. Turned out pretty good. Like I said, I cut it a little bit long. That's probably about six inches, maybe even eight inches too long, but he can cut it down later. Got the tailgate off. It's pretty rough, but it's still pretty neat. And I almost forgot, but then I came back and I cut the bumper off. It's still cooling down. I just got done cutting it. I tried cutting the bolts, but I don't have a hammer with me, so there's no way I could have beat the, the remnants of the bolt back out, so I just cut the frame. I'm just going to scrap the truck later on anyway. It's got some more parts on it I want to pull off. So I'll just set it aside for now. But I'm going to get all this loaded up in my truck. That way tomorrow morning he can just meet me at the yard and I don't have to come out here and meet him. And that way I can just keep on crushing. I got a bunch to get done in the next two days. You can tell summer's on the way. There is a ton of bugs out here. <laughs> They're flying all over the place. Grasshoppers and bugs and beetles and flies. They're going nuts. It's supposed to be pretty warm this week. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Just something different. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. Please consider subscribing if you haven't already. So stay tuned. I don't know what order stuff's going to come out in. Just whenever I get around to editing it, that's when it'll come out. I'll let you all go with that. I hope you have an absolutely fantastic rest of your day. And remember to get out there and find an adventure. We'll see you next time.